Hi, my name is Piyush Goel. I'm the SVP of Engineering at Capillary Technologies. Capillary provides omni-channel consumer engagement solutions to a uh, lot of enterprises and consumer-facing businesses globally. We work with 250 plus enterprise chains uh, with the likes of Tata, Shell, Bharat Petroleum, Lifestyle, Asics, to name a few. Right, and uh, we operate at a significant scale. We manage about one billion plus loyalty accounts globally, and we send about three billion plus. Uh, engagement messages to on behalf of our customers. Uh, Capillary's tech stack has been built on open source technologies since day one. You know, we 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 have we are a proud uh, you know uh, a company in terms of leveraging all open source technologies available out there in the market. And so we have taken so much from the community that you know we feel it's it's incumbent on us to give back to the community in form of sponsoring conferences such as FOSS India, also promoting the culture among the young generation of India, folks in the final year of colleges and even young developers to contribute back to the community, right? It's And the contribution happens to the community and as well as they also get a chance to look at good quality code written by senior developers globally. I think that's the motivation and the incentive for us to be part of this uh, conference today. As I said, right, so the company started way back in 2008 and since then we have been leveraging open source software because as a young startup we never had the money to pay license fees to, you know, all the big companies out there. So whatever is available in the open source market, we must leverage that and that's how we have built the whole tech stack. And I myself have been, you know, been, a bit, been an architect, I've been a developer for many, many years and I do believe in the power of open source and what you know we can build and the problems we can solve when the community comes together and does stuff just for the joy of it and not just for the monetary value of it. No, I absolutely believe that the future is open. The reason for that is, see what's going to happen is, you know, some of the technology powerhouses globally, right, like the Googles, Apples, Amazon and all, right, they will continue to grow in their own segments, but you know, as Anderson Horowitz says that, you know, software is eating the world, right? And eventually software developers will go and build stuff and put it out more and more in the open, right? So open software is the future. There's no doubt about it. And if you look at, see, the country like India, right? With the, with the Indian government's digital arm promoting their own, uh, their own frameworks, their own platforms and inviting developers to build stuff and, you know, solve problems for the billions of Indians, that is only possible when the future is open. Right? The problems of billions of Indians will not be solved by private companies, they will be solved by the developers of India. Right? So recently I was reading right, the, 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 the telecom ministry, uh, I mean the ministry has launched a platform called API Setu. Right? So they have opened almost 800 plus APIs, be it your, your car registry, your insurance, your property papers, right? your, your electricity bills, all of those are getting exposed via APIs. Right? Just imagine the kind of stuff you can build on top of those open APIs. Right? And as I said, the problem for the billions of Indians will be solved by developers who love to build on open stuff. It will not be solved by the private companies. See, what I'm loving is, see, I mean, we have we certainly have a table and we are engaging with the participant, but I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just excited to see, you know, folks in their third year of their engineering, fifth year of their engineering, they're coming and the kind of questions they are asking, I can see the curiosity is being is, is coming out in the ecosystem a lot, right? The young people are actually curious about what companies are doing, what problems are they solving, what can they do, what can they learn, right? So if I graduated 15, 16 years back, and if I look at myself back then, we actually did not have exposure to any of this, right? All of this out there in the open, and the curiosity with which people are coming and asking questions is really, really encouraging. It kind of you know gives me hope that software developers out of India in the next 5 to 10 years are going to be a major contributor to the ecosystem and community going forward. My favorite open source application at the moment would be, I mean, we use Kubernetes very, very heavily, right? So again, Kubernetes was developed in Google, but it was given back to the community out there and Kubernetes has been a savior for us, right? So I won't say that we have actively contributed by building more features, but we have been reporting a lot of bugs on Kubernetes. We have been fixing a lot of bugs and raising patches over there. At the moment for me, that is the key technology that I would say is favorite of mine, right? But we have a lot of stuff around ML, machine learning and ML ops as well. We use a lot of libraries and frameworks developed by the community out there and we leverage a lot of them as well. But at the moment, I would say Kubernetes is one of my favorites. So. 
See, some of the difficulties we did face is that, you know, one of the major challenges in open source is that when a project starts off, right, there's a lot of steam around it, there's a lot of energy around it, but over the years, the maintainers of that software lose interest or they move on to other other uh, initiatives and ventures. So, if the community support is not active, the challenge for companies like us is that we will have to phase out of that technology also very, very soon. Right, so the major challenge I see right now is there's a lot of vibrant community around open source being built, but sustaining that energy levels is the key challenge is what I foresee at the moment. Right, so now we still pick up a lot of open source technologies, but we do a lot more diligence around how many committers of the technologies are there, how active is the community, do we foresee that, you know, this framework, library or tool we are picking up will actually be maintained four years, five years down the line or not. That is the key decision that we have to look at before we adopt any new technology. Yes, so I, I lead the engineering charter at Capillary. I have been with the company for about 10 plus years. And like I have been participating in conferences, I have been associated with the uh, FOSS and the open source and the community in India for almost 10 plus years. And uh, I mean, I love to love to mentor startups, help them scale their tech stack, do pro bono consulting, and we just love to help the community. And you know, we want to see a vibrant software industry coming out of India. We don't want to be the services hub that has been traditionally the case for us for many many years. And I strongly believe that Indian software engineers have the capability of building world class products and contributing back to the ecosystem in the best way out there. The message I would like to give is, folks, as I said, I'm a firm believer that, you know, the, the journey of digitization of India for the billions of Indians has just started. We have the power of solving the problems on the ground. We have the power of building application solutions using the click of a few keys on the keyboard. Just keep, build an awareness around the problems happening around you. Keep a watch on all the initiatives being taken by the community, by the Indian government and just build solutions using technology.